Today we are going to meet Mr. Will Harris. He is the famous businessman from USA, best selling author and uh, he is also the founder of uh, Willpower Foundation. Friends, let me tell you that um, this uh, charitable trust foundation is for, uh, funded by Mr. Harris and his wife Flori and they did this charitable work in India, Ghana, Africa and USA. In Amravati, he is going to create two new groups that is Willpower Warriors and VHF group. Under this group, uh, they will be helping some uh, NGOs, organizations, uh, orphanages and many other social groups. So, uh, and the uh, amazing thing about Will Harris is that he is under the great influence of Indian culture, philosophy Sophie, singing and uh, many other Indian cultural programs. So uh, let's welcome Mr. Harris and uh, welcome sir. Uh, what motivated you to uh, get engrossed in some social organization or social work? First time I did something around social work was when I was in Africa. I was visiting a friend of mine and we saw an all-girls school that had no electricity. It moved me. Oh. Um, one block away, there was an all-boys school, and they had electricity. So what kind of message are we sending when the boys have electricity, but the girls don't? It made me cry to see the girls without shoes, sitting on top of each other, listening to the teacher like the words coming out of her mouth was oxygen for them to breathe. So I asked them, what was their need? They said electricity. So I helped set them up with electricity. And it felt so good. So my motivation for helping people is that anything that moves me, anything that makes me cry, I believe is the reason why I was born. So I just helped. Actually, uh, we all know that uh, India has the uh, highest, what to say, uh, population. And India is very huge. Even Maharashtra is huge. So, uh, particularly you selected Amravati for uh, motivating the students. Uh, actually, we, the people of Amravati, don't consider ourselves uh, cool enough. We all know that Amravati is not a metropolitan city. Because uh, the thoughts of people and the uh, uh, difficulties and obstacles that we face by the um, social uh, committees or uh, society, it is not like uh, that uh, metropolitan level. So we not, don't consider Amravati as a, a cool place, but uh, you came in Amravati and uh, made us feel that that uh, Amravati girls are not the uh, means uh, what we are what we were considering uh, till now to us that uh, you are not uh, small means uh, you are like others. So uh, you came to Amravati and you means i am not saying that uh, you don't went to nagpur or uh, pune or uh, mumbai but i want to know uh, the reason that why you came to amravati for uh, motivating students it makes me sad that i have to answer that question because t to me it just seems obvious the biggest people always come from the smallest places you know that the biggest people always come from the smallest places. You had an Indian president that recently died that came from a small place that was going around motivating people, that was called like a rocket scientist, smart guy, big heart, came from a small place. It doesn't matter where you come from. The only thing that matters is where you're going. I know that I've seen people all over the world and to me, we're all the same. I see good people and bad in big cities. I see good people and bad in small cities. But I see people. So I didn't pick Lombardi out to come help. I had a sister here. I came to visit her when I got here. I just decided to help. I think anywhere you go in life, that anybody you meet or talk to, that is happening for a reason. So everywhere I go, I just looked to see, and I had to remind people here how great they are. People think that I came to India to do charity. No, I'm the charity. India has made me grow. Indian gurus, Indian saints, Indian philosophers, from the gentlemen that help fight against the caste system, to people that I meet every day, like principals of Catholic schools and also businessmen out in the community that do kindness in a way that never gets advertised, like mine. India is not the charity. 
I'm the chairman. I have learned more from the people here in my experiences than I have ever gained. <laughs> Everybody is a potential star. Yeah. They just need to be told that. Uh, I actually remember uh, Swami Vivekananda. Uh, he, was, he was one of our leaders. And uh, he used to uh, roam in all countries and uh, used to spread the uh, Indian knowledge from Vedas and the Mahabharata man. Uh, and his thoughts of, was also like something like that, that uh, we, use, uh, we should uh, uh, engross in the other country affairs first. We should take some knowledge from there that how the people do it, how they do it. And the thing that we felt nice, we should apply it in our, in our country. And uh, he, uh, means when I read, read his book, uh, I felt that, uh, that he is really a great man. And today, uh, after seeing you, you are just uh, doing the same thing that he did. Uh, but in a different ma manner, but uh, the agenda is same that uh, you want to unite the whole world, means the whole, you consider the whole world as a family and uh, uh, not only uh, your country but uh, you felt sympathy and uh, uh, love for the whole world. So that's, uh, I felt so nice that uh, you uh, felt uh, you have affection about us and uh, third question is that um, what uh, role your parents uh, played in your success and in, today you are a, a great businessman, you are, a, you are one of the best author in America and uh, I think you have a foundation will power. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, means uh, not everyone's parent, parents are uh, motivating everyone. Suppose today I am uh, going in journalism or fine arts. So uh, my father is motivating me, but my friend is uh, going to uh, towards that field, but her father uh, is not supporting her. So uh, everyone is not lucky enough to for that. So uh, did your parents supported you from the childhood? I want to make a comment about what you said about Swami Vivekananda, and then I'm going to answer your question because I get that a lot about the support uh, from college students I speak to. So I studied Swami Vivekananda. He came to my country and gave a great speech and started it out addressing everybody as his brother. Um, we all stand on the shoulder of giants. There is no original thought. It has been thought before. And any kindness or goodness you see has come from another. So if I'm studying Swami Vivekananda or to, to Maharaj, I am learning lessons that were taught to me because I sought them out from another. It makes me not great at all. I'm just studying and learning from great people. So what you see in me is because of the others I study. Swami Vivekananda changed the life of a billionaire in the USA. John D. Rockefeller. A poor man from India changed the life of a billionaire in my country because he taught him about being kind. Yeah. And that's why it doesn't matter where you come from. Yeah. It just matters what your heart is. And you are right. I believe in the world. I don't look and see race or gender or country. I see people. And the only way we're going to solve our world's problems is we stop looking at the world that way too, that we're separate. We can't fix the puzzle if we're not working with all the pieces. Yeah. So we got to work together. Now, my parents, my parents were very simple. My father uh, and mother uh, were divorced. I was raised by my mother. I spent most of the time with my mother. My mother did not own a business. Yeah. My mother did not own a humanitarian foundation. My mother never became head of global sales training in any company. Now that wasn't the type of mother I had. My mother didn't get a college degree. So all the things that I achieved, I was the first in my family to do it. My mother didn't teach me, but she didn't stop me. She didn't teach me, but she didn't stop me. 
my father tried to stop me. He said, why don't you get just a traditional job? Why do you go off and do these other things? Everyone isn't going to see the world the way you see it. I look at time. Time. Something could have been right in that generation's time frame. But time changes. And we people have to evolve and change with it too. You go back to the time of Krishna and life was different than the time of Gandhi. You look at the time of Gandhi and it's much different than now the time of Modi. Yeah. So people evolve and change. And the advice that I find that people who love us give, they're giving it out of love. Even if it's not best for the time. So really you only have one question. And this is for anybody that feels that they don't have the proper support and what they want to do. That one question is, what's your brand? What's your brand? Tata is a brand. Reliance is a brand. Pepsi is a brand. You have a brand as a daughter. You have a brand as a sister. You have a brand as a reporter. What is your brand? If your brand is to do every single thing that somebody else tells you, like a robot, that's your brand. If your brand is to assess and analyze and then make the appropriate choice for yourself in your life because you're the one that has to live with it, that is your brand. Maybe your brand is to ask questions and find out what would it take for you to allow me to try. Most kids, students, children get a no from their parent and they just run away. They get cried, they get depressed. They don't say, what would it take for me to try? Can I try for two months and if it doesn't work, I go back. They don't say, let me go in your direction and then I'm going to look at subways to do a little bit of my dream. And sometimes, this is a truth you can live with forever. I live with it daily. Sometimes, today, people can totally disagree with your direction. Yeah. And years later, they will come back and say, you're right. You're right. But unless you have the power within yourself to move forward in the direction you know is right, you are not going to be able to please everybody, them and you, at the same time right now. It may take some time. I was in a press conference yesterday, two days ago, and a gentleman said, why do you use your money that way? Why do you do that? Why are you here? And I gave him the answer. He was like, that's not how you should do it. You should do it this way. And I smiled. <laughs> and I respectfully said, I like the way I'm spending my money. My wife likes the way I'm spending my money. And if you don't like the way I'm spending my money, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. As long as I'm not hurting you, I am okay with that. You don't have to agree with what makes me happy. And I know what makes me happy. Today I was happy. I had people from different groups coming together. Children of all ages, 5 and 65. Dancing together, listening to positivity, thinking about their dreams and possibilities. It was joyful. That makes me happy. Uh, sorry to hack about your mother and father, but uh, I was not uh, knowing all these things. So, uh, I mean, so your story tells that uh, whether you have a support or not, you should, uh, you should be powerful and uh, be engrossed in some positivity and go forward. So, uh, that's the very oh, nice one thing. Other thing. My father loves what I do now. Yeah. He didn't then, but I didn't stop. Because I knew where I was going. He eventually would. Yeah, I mean, sir, mother and father want us to settle in good manner mm -hmm. so that uh, we can earn a lot and uh, uh, lead a luxurious life. But, uh, and uh, 
means it is just because of the generation gap that they tell us that you don't do this and you don't do that and uh, to, uh, today this is the main problem in our society uh, many uh, many students are we see many students who attempt suicide for this uh, conditions that uh, my father uh, don't want me to do that but I want to do that uh, and my mother don't want me to do that but uh, and at that uh, time the student felt depressed and uh, they commit such things but uh, one thing uh, uh, your story tells them that they whatever they do they do for us they tell for us that you wouldn't go in the right direction and uh, it depends on us uh, how, what kind of impact we ha have it on our mind so uh, your story is really uh, inspirational and uh, in a seminar you told try try fail fail try try fail fail and success <laughs> so I like it the most and uh, uh, I want to ask you uh, when you uh, face failures in life uh, at that time what was the conditions in society what society said about you and at uh, today's uh, today's period when uh, you are a successful person how society looks at you means how society changes we want this uh, interview means we want students to look uh, at this uh, at this interview uh, in a life changing uh, interview or life changing video so uh, i request you to uh, tell uh, the situations about different situations that uh, you faced in life i fail every day every day i fail multiple times <laughs> people call me successful and I believe I am, but I think it's important that everyone knows failure is involved too. That you have to fail your way to success. My team is so stressed out and they're like, oh my God, I hope this works out and we never did this before. And I tell them, you're going to fail today. But the positivity says, you're going to fail today. Then I tell them, say it. <laughs> they say, I'm going to fail today. That's right. But you're going to fail less tomorrow. You're going to fail less the day after that. You fail, 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 fail until you're massively successful. Because I know if I take the weight off of them of being perfect, then they truly will be perfect. True perfection is only doing your best. What could be better than that? You did your best. So every day I feel I could go through a laundry list of all the different situations I filmed that. I tried to do a flash mob and they failed. I had a bunch of dancers who loved dancing. They didn't dance. How bad do you have to be when you can't get dancers to dance? <laughs> but today you saw hundreds and hundreds of people dancing together. Yeah. If I would have quit that first time, where would I be? People said, you're a motivational speaker. Why do you care about dancing? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, I am whatever I say I am. I am not what you say I am. I love dancing. So I can do whatever I want to. I don't let somebody else's definition define me. My own definition is the only one that matters. Because I know, I know the people that talk about me, talk about everybody. Yeah. And the people that find good things to say about me, they only find good things to say about everybody. So if I'm running around looking at what people say about me, what does that say about me? So I fail all the time. I'm just not afraid to fail because I know I can fail, but that doesn't make me a failure. The only thing that makes me a failure is if I stop. I have tried and started 20 businesses that failed. I didn't stop. Now I'm doing so well. I have other people working for me right now while I'm here doing some things that I love, helping people. I have failed and, and friendships and trying to have uh, business partners that started. I am 46 years old. You don't get to where I am and not fail. I'm just honest enough to say it. Because I have no fear either. <laughs> because I know once you find your universal truth, 
once you find something that if you stick to consistently it brings you joy, there's nothing else. For me it's kindness. I know if I'm consistently kind, I can have a bad day, but I never have a bad week. I can have a bad week, but I never have a bad month. I can have a bad month, but it would never become a bad year. Because when you're consistently kind, eventually things come back to you. Let people doubt me. Time is the biggest weapon against any fraud. Time. It doesn't matter. You can try to look, you can try to find, you can try to talk about it. Time. There's a lot of people thousands of years ago, we once thought were good. Now we look at them and say, they weren't that good. Time. Was the importance of uh, reading in your life because after listening your all these thoughts, I feel that you are a very literate person. Your knowledge level is very vast. So, uh, what was the importance? What is the importance of reading in your life? Um, I hate reading. <laughs> I hate reading. Um, I wrote eleven books, but I hate reading. I love audio books. Oh. Okay. I love audiobooks and I love learning. So that would probably be better for me. I read slow. I read like how I talk. My wife, oh my God, she reads so fast. Like, zzz, 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 zzz. it's like a speed reader. We cannot sit and read the newspaper together because she's like, you ready? I'm like, no, five more minutes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm saying this because most of the boys I meet do not like reading. That doesn't mean they should stop learning. You can find other ways. My major books are all on audiobooks, too. Because I know there's a lot of people out there like me. It's best to say I love learning. If I have a choice of seeing a movie about a female boxer from India, okay, or watching an action movie with some actor, I read or watched the movie about the boxer. I read or watched the movie about the girl wrestler from India that ended up getting a championship. So when it comes to learning, I look to learn. I don't like to read. Um, if I have to, I will. I got a book by Swami Vivekananda that one of the colleges gave me two days ago. I was reading it before the seminar. People were screaming, willpower, willpower. I was just reading about Swami Vivekananda. You asked me how other people's opinion of me change me. It doesn't. I am who I am. It doesn't matter if 50 people are screaming or none. I stay who I am. I'm a businessman of USA uh, and I have heard that you and your uh, wife, uh, you both donate half of your income uh, to charity every year in the India, uh, Ghana region. Uh, Africa, uh, USA. So uh, nowadays we can see our routine life is uh, very hectic. I mean, I as a student, I feel that my life is so hectic. I, I don't have time to do all these things. And uh, even a small man thinks that he is very busy. And you are a, a well-known businessman. Uh, you uh, donate some uh, money. You donate uh, your half income. And uh, not only income, but uh, you also uh, spend time with others spend time with uh, the students uh, that uh, you are motivating. So, uh, uh, really salute to you and uh, your wife both because uh, you are great, uh, doing a great thing for a society and uh, from now I will look at you as a uh, really very great idol. But uh, how you find time uh, for all this social work? I will give you an, two reasons. The reason why I have a lot of time for social work is because of priorities. When everything is a priority, nothing's a priority. When everything is a priority, when you run around answering every phone call or running at the every request, nothing is a priority. You really don't get much done. The second reason I'm able to get a lot done is because I trust my heart. Whatever my heart tells me to do, I just do. There is no hesitation. There is no filter. I know my purpose in life. And when you know your purpose in life, you know what is not. And that's how 
as per my time. Many of the students uh, in India or in other countries too, but uh, because of some uh, failures or problems or some difficulties or obstacles, uh, they left dreaming. Many of the uh, students we can see uh, they have passed uh, the 10th and 12th standards and uh, then uh, because of money problem or some other things they, uh, they left education and uh, they start working and uh, the, the, the dream uh, that, have, that, have, that they the successful plan that they have for the future they are uh, left in, in middle. So uh, according to you how dreaming is important in a person's life? Dreaming is the most important thing in a person's life. I talk to people and I am shocked when I say, what is your dream? And they say, I don't have one. I physically fall on the floor. <laughs> you have to have a dream. Your dream is your reason for waking up. And if you don't have a dream yet, that just means, it means you need to meet new people or go new places. Meet new people or go new places. You can't keep doing the same old things and expect to get new ideas. Uh, today you came to Amrati, you uh, taken a seminar, a motivational seminar, and uh, you motivated the students very nicely. Uh, even I was there uh, in that seminar and I felt very, uh, because uh, we don't, I don't saw such a seminar where we are dancing, relaxing our mind in such a uh, good way and you are uh, talking uh, to all the persons, interacting with them generally the speaker uh, stands on stage uh, he uh, keep on uh, talking and talking and uh, the students are writing what uh, he is talking and just the seminar is over and for that they charge 5000 to 6000 rupees and uh, that's, uh, that's a very really, uh, that's really sad thing for us but uh, today uh, I came to you uh, and I heard you, so it was uh, very pleasing and I felt that, uh, that the world needs you, the world needs the people like you and uh, today you uh, came in Amaranti, you saw the students and uh, you interacted with them. So uh, now what uh, message you would like to uh, give to the students of Amaranti and also the people of Amaranti? The message that I would like to give to the people of Ambarbadi, to the students of Ambarbadi, to the Paris of Lombardy, to all of the teachers in Lombardy, is that you matter, you are special, that it's not about the size of your city, it's about the size of your heart, that it's not about the number of people that are in your city, it's the number of acts of kindness you do on purpose every day. Whatever I do here isn't about me. It's about you. I want help. I want help trying to spread kindness throughout the world. I want help. I want help from those people that feel and think and have a heart like me, that believe that the world can be a better place, that believe that together, if we look more at what we have in common, we won't notice those differences or even the differences become the power and the reason for us to go up. I want people to know if they have a bad day, that's life. Life isn't going to be a constant joy ride. You have ups and downs. Never give up. As long as you keep going, as long as you don't quit, you will win. I want the people of Lombardy to know the same thing that I say everywhere I go. Use what you love to fight what you hate. That's why we were put here. We were put here because of our emotions. Our emotions are the keys to unlocking your purpose. You can have two people from the same family, but emotionally, something drives one more than the other. That's a hint. It's a hint to your life purpose. It's a hint to the contribution you can make in the world. Use what you love to fight what you Thank you sir for your valuable time uh, that you spent with us and may your all dreams be successful and you achieve the goals that you decided in the social work and uh, uh, the uh, motivation or the, the things that you share with us in this interview will uh, helpful for all the students, teachers and uh, people in Amravati, not only in Amravati but uh, in whole Vidarbha 
and uh, thank you on behalf of Vision News Channel, uh, Vidarbha News 365, and all the people of Amravati because uh, it's a great, it's a huge uh, round of applause for us that you came to Amravati and motivated in such a way because it was first time for all the students in Amravati that we uh, met such a great motivator. So it was very uh, exciting. It was uh, the seminar was very energetic and uh, visit soon. <laughs> If you're happy, if you're happy, then my journey is came true. Thank you, sir. Your positive attitude and energy will change the student's life. And this interview will, uh, will be the ray of hope in the dark tunnel for many people. Thank yeah. you.